hey guys welcome back to the biggest agricultural platform in namibia known as nduna wengombe which means headman of cattle my name of course is mitsu mutumba simata aka the headman of cattle firstly i just want to say thank you very much guys for at least uh, uh granting one of my best birthday wishes because i asked you guys can we at least get this page to 800 subscribers within the month of march since my birthday was on the fifth last week saturday i mean last saturday the past and you guys delivered we are currently sitting at 100 800 800 and 1 108 i mean 801 801 801 subscribers thank you very much we are well on our way to hit 900 and then well on our way to get a thousand subscribers and who knows maybe one day we'll be celebrating in a proper studio to fix up this gym room of mine and make it a proper studio and we'll be celebrating the youtube plaque or we might throw a headman of cattle theme party and maybe most of you guys would have to come through particularly my south african subscribers you guys are the real mvps you guys have pushed this channel whether you've learned about the channel via the social media streets or you've learned by learned about the channel via probably a friend of yours telling you about it because i know every time i'm in spaces or i'm on you i mean i'm on uh, youtube spaces i mean twitter spaces and on clubhouse sessions I see a lot of South Africans following me there and I usually share my link there. So I believe many, maybe a bulk number comes from South Africa. So it's between my country Namibia and my South African subscribers. So thank you very much guys for getting me there. So let's get into today's uh, video that we're going to do today. It's it's based on uh, inbreeding of cattle. I mean inbreeding of livestock, not really cattle. I want to speak on the broadest term of uh, livestock. So let's get into the information. As you guys know, I'm never writing so I got my trusted notebook with me with my not so flattering handwriting, my friends would tell me. So let's get into this information. Inbreeding. Inbreeding is the mating of individuals that are related. In the broader sense, all members of a breed are related. As a result, any seed stock produced is, pra any seed stock produced is practicing some inbreeding. Therefore, when generally therefore we generally reserve we generally reserve the term inbreeding for mating of animals that are more closely related than the, than the average than the average average of the breed genetic genetics and phenotypic effects inbreeding can have dramatic effects on a herd these effects are the result of individuals receiving identical genes from each parent if the parents are related, it means it means more likely that they that they have the that they have genes that are ident that are identical. An individual receiving identical genes from each each parent is said to have is said to have homozygous for the pair of genes. The, this would be desirable if the genes, if the gene the individual receives from each parent leads to superior performance. However, however, most animals carry undesirable genes that usually remain hidden unless the animal is, unless the animal is homozygous. An inbred individual is more likely to be homozygous for any gene. So the animal is more likely to experience undesirable genes and hence undesirable traits. Inbreeding does not create undesirable recessive genes, but it does tend to bring to light this unfavorable genetics. This leads to decline in average phenotypic performance called inbreeding depressions. This phenomena is well documented in all the major livestock species. Inbreeding Depression has the greatest effect on reproductive traits, followed by growth traits with little or no reproductive traits. This phenomena is well documented in all major livestock species. Inbreeding depression has the greatest effect on with li with little or no effect on carcass traits. This pattern is the reverse of magnitude of heritability for this class class of traits inbreeding depression is essential the opposite effect of the of the hybrid vigor which is the advantage gained from close line close line or close line or breeds although occasionally high performance animals are produced 
Inbreeding generally results in an overall uh, reduction in performance. This reduction is man manifested in many ways. In most obvious effects of inbreeding are poor reproductive efficient, including the high mortality rate, lower growth rate, and high frequency of her hereditary hereditary abnormalities. This has been shown by, num by numerous studies with cattle, horses, sheep, swine, and laboratory animals. So that's what inbreeding causes. Some characteristics, like meat quality, for example, like meat quality, are hardly influenced. So the meat of the animal doesn't get influenced by inbreeding. Others, like reproductive efficiently, efficiency, are greatly influenced by inbreeding. Adversary effect on the growth rate of animals. When inbreeding is continuously or intensely carried out, the growth rate and, maturity and mature weight of the offspring's prodigies is negatively affected. This is the growth rate and mature weight would moderately decrease. So this is when you do it conti continuously and intensively. Adversary effect on reproductive performance. Another danger of continuous intensive inbreeding practice in that reproductive performance is that of the reproductive performance or, efficient, or efficiency of the prodigies will reduce, for example, puberty, testicle or, over, or, over, or ovarian, ovary development may, may be delayed. So that's another thing. Another uh, effect, economic traits in animals such as high milk, lit, high milk liter numbers and size, high milk let down or product or product or production high high carcass quality a high meat or egg production moderately decreases as as you increase as you increase the inbreeding then they talk about vig they talk about death and mortality death and mortality rates tend to increase when continuous or intense or intense inbreeding intense inbreeding is continued inbred product inbred produ production of inbreeding are also adversely affected by environmental conditions and they're resistant to disease become reduced or weakened. So those are some of the things that can happen. So in other words, if these animals are bred, for example, out of ngunis, are bred out of, like, for example, ngunis, an indigenous cattle breed, which is hardy and is very adaptable to the conditions and doesn't get affected by ticks and so forth. But because it has been continuously inbred, maybe using the same father, same mother to... And, and then the children keep on mounting the mom or the or the or, or the children or the, or the or the children keep on mounting the sisters so you start having inbreeding within your cattle and now this animal is extremely sensitive to conditions which the breed itself is not known to be that sensitive to by mating relatives and developing highly inbred families a farmer can unmask many determ determ determine Farmers can unmask many determinal recessive alleles and simultaneously, simultaneously cull families that carry many hidden genetic, uh, genetic defects. Some must, since, sorry, since most animals carry several or several dozen determinal recessive alleles that are, that are in the heterozygous state. This type of breeding program is a several, a several, is a several form of prodigy of protogen, of prodigy testing, but families that establish uh, that exhibit no defect that exhibit no uh, problems are genetic are genetically superior and defect free, because this type of breeding program is so severe. Many inbreeding many inbreed families must be created in order to identi in order to identify and save the few that will be defect free although this although this is costly it is a breeding program that will produce outstanding animals in terms of qualitative uh, phenotypes with a few genetic with a few genetic uh, def uh, defects so that's inbreeding one side i talk about the bad part but then the other side i speak about the good part that if it's done properly and you continuously do it and you start culling off those ones that show problems maybe grow slow grow small six legs defected heads has an eye on the forehead you cull those ones and then those calves or those cows that might not show any defects 
those you could keep. But it's a risky thing because it's not all the time. As I mentioned, some of the negative things such as animals who die easily. An animal that's supposed to be, like I said, Nguni, supposed to be very adaptable to the African conditions and the ticks, but is dying from very small climatic changes and very small tick bites. So these are the things that you need to take into consideration. So that are the dangers of, of, of inbreeding and why inbreeding is mostly discouraged, particularly in livestock farming, if you're a commercial farmer. Like they said, it could lead to things such as reduction in milk uh, production, reduction in weight and so forth. So this is why it's very important, as I said, I would always change my bulls after every three years of a breeding cycle. After three years, I've bred with them. He's done his job. I would replace him and bring in a new bull and bring in a new blood, maybe from a different stud or from a different farmer. New blood just to come in, spice up my genetics a bit. Rather than keeping the same bull, let's call that bull uh, bla blacky. But my people, Af when we try to Africanize, we'd say blacky. So keeping blacky there in the crawl, and blacky has been mating this cows for the last three, four, five years, six years, of course, you're going to start seeing problems within your cows. You're going to start seeing smaller cows born. You're going to start seeing cows dying at birth. You're going to start seeing cows of six legs. And you, some of, sometimes you might even say it's witchcraft, but sometimes it's not witchcraft. It is just the, it's just the fact that you are inbreeding and you are doing it intensively. So those are my two cents on inbreeding. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say thank you. I just want to say uh, thank you very much for the subscribe, for the subscription and the likes. It's helping a lot on the channel and increasing the view hours. We are tittering close to a thousand to a thousand view hours. What YouTube requires us four thousand view hours for us to start getting monetized and probably start getting some sponsors on our channel. But that is in future. I just want to say thank you and let's keep on pushing. Let's keep on sharing the channel. Let's keep on growing it. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and bye for now.